Hey guys, today we're looking at the M3 Lee or Grant medium tank in 176 by Airfix. As you can see there, there's the tank depicted on the front of the box in uh, British service. Um, it has a little uh, motif there or decal um, saying Monty. Um, so that uh, could be Montgomery's own personal tank, <laughs> perhaps. Um, but basically the uh, M3 Grant uh, or Lee was kind of a stopgap um, in preparation for the arrival of the M4 Sherman. Now it did have a 75 mil gun uh, mounted in the hull, but this was a limited traverse uh, weapon, so it wouldn't be as practical as obviously a turret mounted 75 millimeter gun. It also had um, in the uh, the larger turret there the um, what was that? It was a two pounder or 37 millimeter gun actually, uh, which is what 1.46 inches. Um, so basically, it was uh, quite practical in the in the sense that it had carried two guns, and it was uh, kind of the right tank at the right time uh, for a short period of time in North Africa, where uh, the British were uh, suffering against the uh, superior uh, German uh, armor, such as the Panzer IV and that. Um, basically, the uh, the British had ordered the M3s uh, built to their specifications. So you had the Grant and the Lee, the Lee being the American uh, variant. Um, batches of M3s were also sent to the Soviet Union. Uh, a British experience in uh, the North African campaign highlighted the disadvantages of the M3's uh, limited traverse uh, gun mounting, so uh, that's, uh, that's why the, uh, the M4 was kind of coming along anyway online. Um, and by the time the M3 uh, production line ceased in, uh, I think it was 42, there was uh, just over 6,250 of these things had been produced, and about 1,100 of them actually been produced in, uh, in Canada. Um, after that time, a lot of the M3s were withdrawn from service uh, and they were used for a large number of you know, trials and special purpose conversions, including the uh, the M7, uh, the, as we know as the Priest, which is a 105mm self-propelled howitzer in it, uh, or the M12 105mm self-propelled gun. There was also heavy artillery tractors and recovery vehicles and that type of thing. But anyway, enough of that. Let's have a look at the uh, the kit and the box and all that first. So anyway, it's a, it's a 176 scale. That's the one thing to watch out for with air, Airfix kits. Um, they are in 176, a lot of them. Um, they, sometimes they were boxed as 172, unfortunately. But they are definitely uh, 176. Uh, and in fairness, nowadays, in these red boxes, um, they are labelled as 176, which is... Uh, at least not, not confusing. <laughs> um, the sides of the box, usual Airfix uh, scenario here, nothing particularly um, different there in any of those, as you can see. And the back of the box, and this particular uh, boxing anyway, has a nice um, camouflage or sand uh, camo, uh, whatever you want to call it, sand desert uh, paint pattern um, depicted. Uh, it shows you the, uh, the home rolled paint colours to use there, and of course, obviously, you can convert uh, to whatever brand of paint you're actually utilising yourself. Obviously, 70 and 74 are the uh, the colours here that they're using uh, to depict uh, this particular vehicle, which is uh, an LA main um, kind of a desert scheme. So that's basically the uh, the box itself. Uh, it's a fairly uh, fairly basic kit. Um, it's what skill level two and one airflex flying hour if you're uh, into all that uh, so there you can see then that you have the uh, the one depicted is the uh, 8th army tactical hq north africa 1942 so it could well be uh, montgomery's own tank i've actually stood beside the uh, this particular tank in uh, the imperial war museum uh, there's a photograph of a much younger me knocking around somewhere uh, beside that one but anyway and then you have the uh, the m3 medium uh, tank which is the lee of course which is uh, 2nd Battalion, 13th Army Regiment uh, in Tunisia in 43. So that's that's what you're basically going up against with uh, with this particular kit. Um, nice boxing, lovely art, couldn't fault it, looks really good. Um, nice uh, modern take on uh, what is it, basically a very old kit. So let's have a look at the sprue. Uh, now the sprues on these guys, actually this has belonged to my son, I'm just going to hand him the box here. Here you go dude, Will you mind that for me? Yeah. Put it on the table over there. Um, we were down in Cork in uh, the Republic of Ireland, Cork City, and uh, into a shop called Mark's Models, and he picked that up for the princely sum of, I think it was 7 99 was it, dude? Mm. I think it was 7 99 I'm pretty sure it was, I think you had 7 euros and you stuck me for another one. Anyway, the sprues, uh, fairly uh, straightforward, uh, basic uh, Airfix uh, style uh, sprue there. 
You can see the various components of the hull, uh, hatches, and the uh, the, the rear uh, engine access point there. Uh, this particular one, several sprues involved in this, of course, being an all air fixed one. Um, you've got some of the guns and bits and pieces there, and you have the wheels. Okay, uh, this piece was loose; it must have come off something. That's one of the side components for the hull and the wheel assembly. Uh, lower hull, floor floor hull section, engine decking here. Nice little bit of detail on that, actually. In fairness to it. As you can see there, if the camera will focus, there we go. So uh, a little bit of fine paintwork there, and you'll be uh, producing a nice little vehicle. Um, and here we have some more pieces. This little hatch piece is about to fall off, but you have uh, drive wheel sprockets, that kind of thing. Another part of the uh, the upper hull uh, section, and you have your uh, wheel sections here. Some more hull there and there. And there's uh, one more piece finally, here we go, this is kind of the, the section close to the gun, there's kind of a hatch area here as well, so that's that. Um, and this particular uh, vinyl track is actually lovely and supple, actually it really is, I don't want to be, it's brand new, but uh, they're, they're a nice dark uh, kind of a vinyl, as opposed to, I think before these were kind of a light, more plasticky sort of a feel to them, um, and they didn't kind of form into the wheel, they kind of give a more natural kind of sagging effect uh, not quite as good as these vinyl ones tend to do these days but that's that let's have a little look at the decals so there you can see the decals they're pretty registered now who's doing these um but they're uh, they're very decent very straightforward fairly basic as i always say but uh, at the end of the day um they're accurate to uh, what they're trying to represent so we can't fault that so that is uh, the uh, decals we have a look at the instructions there buddy if you pass me up the instructions there please yeah now uh, you'll also see the M3 uh, Lee variant um, turn up in, what's that movie you've been watching recently? Um, Sahara. Sahara, yeah. Uh, late 80s, early 90s uh, remake, I think, of uh, a movie that might have starred Bogart, actually. Um, and what happens with their tank? Um, it was getting broken down, then uh, they fixed it. It broke down, they got stuck in a desert and they had to fight a lot of Germans, didn't they? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, anyway, that's why we're using using the uh, the M3 today because this is one of his movie projects. He wants to do uh, a tiger, um, and uh, the Fury uh, uh, Sherman, uh, this one, and a few others. He did the Hellcat already, didn't you, from uh, Saints and Soldiers? Yeah. Yeah. So he's uh, that's the way he he puts his kits together based on movies. The instruction sheet, anyway, basically as you can see there, standard um, Airfix fare. You have your various languages, so obviously starting with English at the top, and then you have your assembly instructions and the various languages, and the assembly icon instructions there as well. Fair enough. And then in here, as you can see there, the instructions are fairly straightforward, but I've said this before to my uh, detriment, um, that they look easy and it'll be no problem, and I've encountered problems particularly with the Airfix Panther, unfortunately, which should have been an easy easy build, but I ran into some, some difficulties. As you can see there, it really doesn't look overly complicated. And having put together the Hasegawa uh, version of this particular vehicle, um, I think I'm probably competent enough to assist him in doing this. Uh, so that's steps one to five. Step six then, a little bit more going on there. Obviously you can have either either Turf or the Lee, uh, the Lee being this one here and the Grant being this one here. Um, you can have whichever one you want, and uh, then you have various track assemblies and stuff going in there. They do uh, say to, to glue these things together. Sometimes they say to heat it. I generally just glue it. I find it more um, more reliable, and you can form them into the rollers on top there. You'll notice that these uh, track rollers on the top here, if you look at the Sherman, they're actually on the side down here. That's how you'll know if, you're, if you find yourself that this is your eye view at any point in time close to a either a Sherman or, or an M3 or an M4, you'll know that this is the M3 because of the rollers are up here. Um, and let's see what else have we got there. So there's your various uh, turrets there. You have the Grant and you have the Lee, and that's that's basically, that's very straightforward, as I always say. So uh, on the back then of uh, the instruction sheet, you get a nice um, color uh, paint instruction section here. Um, wasn't too much need for it, really considering they're only giving you three colours, uh, which is 155, 70 and 11. Uh, 155 being the dark green, although I think we're going to use 86 to blend in with some stuff that we've already used. And I've mentioned before, I'm using 86 because it's matching in with a lot of stuff that I've been doing over the last 20-something oh, years, 25 years. Uh, but if I was to do it again, I would probably use, um, possibly even this colour, 155. It's a little bit darker, I think it... Uh, 
and kind of a bit more uh, realistic uh, to uh, to the actual vehicles themselves. 86 is a little bit light, but that's that. So we're going to crack on later on and get this uh, rocking and rolling and see if we can uh, kind of build this together. Are you going to do this yourself, right? Do I have to help you? Me and you. Oh, me and you, is it? Yeah, okay, which means I'm going to be doing all the small stuff. Okay, dog. Right, well, we'll crack on with that. Um, so for the minute, we'll leave you with the image there, the uh, lovely artwork of the um, the M3 in uh, British service in North Africa. And we'll toddle along, get a look at uh, some of our other videos, um, if you like. Uh, like and subscribe, if you would, be so kind. We appreciate it, and we will get to work uh, almost immediately. And we'll come back, and uh, we'll show you the uh, in the second part of this video how we get on with that. So until then, guys. Be safe. See you soon. Bye. Hi guys, we've managed to complete the M3 Lee medium tank. Uh, we did the American variant, which is the Lee, the British one being the Grant. As you can see, our one is an American markings here, representative of a vehicle in, in service in Tunisia in 1943 with the 13th Army Regiment. Anyway, uh, the tank itself was, or the model itself, was a very, very simple, straightforward kit. Um, no major fit and fit issues with it. I uh, have to say that there was a little bit of off alignment around here at the very top there, just where the, uh, the hull roof plate would have gone in, in position. But other than that, uh, that was about it. Uh, one other little thing which kind of annoyed me a small bit was here, where the, I suppose you'd call it the gun mantlet, where the 37mm gun is mounted. Um, there's a little bit of a gap around the edges, that piece just doesn't fit in properly no matter what you do. But other than that, um, you know, it's just uh, you just stick it in position with a bit of glue, maybe a bit of filler around it might do the job. But you might be able to see there, there's a little bit of a gap at the bottom. But uh, as I say, no matter what I did, that could not be resolved, so it's just, it is as it is. Um, but we found it a fairly straightforward uh, kit to put together, no major issue. What did you think of it? Good. You know, did you like it? So uh, this is made because you watched that movie Sahara. Yeah. What was the name of the tank in that movie? Lulu Bell. Lulu Bell. All right. Is that what you call this one? Yeah. All right, okay. But anyway, just as a size comparison, this uh, here is one of his uh, rather battered um, Airfix Shermans, but it just gives you kind of a, an idea of how they compare size-wise together. They're both 176. Um, as you can see, and they are matched in uh, color-wise, but Humbrol 86, and uh, they actually have similar markings on the turret and that as well. Um, but as you can see, this one has had a little bit of battle damage. The barrel has been replaced with a cocktail stick. The hatches are missing. There's a few wheels missing here. But as I say, it was really for comparison's sake. He has a few of those, which have seen a lot of action, and I presume this one will end up in a similar condition. But um, that's it, really. It's a nice little tank. Um, it is, as I say, 176. I have done uh, 172 variants of this by, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Hasegawa, um, which are literally just a fraction bigger, but if you're matching them with Airfix stuff, uh, the Airfix one is probably the one to go for. Um, but other than that, you'll be absolutely fine. Uh, so, as I say, Airfix, M3, Lee, or Grant, depending on which variant you want to uh, put together. Um, nice little build, uh, didn't take much longer than about a half an hour. Um, small fit and fit issues, but the the mould itself I think is from about 1969, so it's probably to be expected that there would be uh, one or two little finicky bits. Uh, but other than that, pretty uh, pretty straightforward as I always say. Nice little bit of detail here, so it is easy to, to get it together and uh, have a nice little uh, detailed uh, vehicle. So that's it guys, we will leave you with... Um, the picture there, the uh, artwork of the Airfix M3 medium grant, uh, medium tank, uh, Lear Grant, and we will ask you to, uh, what do we normally say? To like and subscribe. Like and subscribe and please come back and watch our videos and lots of them. Right, well I think uh, to translate there, I think what he said was, please like and subscribe, we really do appreciate it. And we'll be back again with another video rather soon. So thank you very much for watching guys, see you soon.